my um, throw is uh, now, after all the masses that I have preached about this, uh, I, I really, but uh, so um, I hope I can finish with some voice. <laughs> Listen, uh, today, when we go to the gospel, we are going to see that this is, uh, you know, last week gospel, Jesus entered into the synagogue in Nazareth as he was his custom because he was a Jew. They sent, they, they handed him the, the scriptures and he rolled out the scripture passage where from Isaiah when he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because, you know, uh, um, I'm going to bring good tidings to the poor and I'm going to bring, you know, uh, uh, a year favorable to the Lord. So everybody was amazed what was here. And Jesus made a statement that everybody was, you know, uh, very, very, uh, you know, what is this? What a kind of, uh, of knowledge he have that uh, the scripture passage is fulfilling. You're hearing. What is he saying? Well, that he is the Messiah. Because, you know, that's what's referring. Those readings are referring to the Messiah. And uh, immediately they were asking where this come from. But because, you know, this is, it isn't this the son of Joseph? So they knew that, uh, they knew from, from, you know, from when he was a boy. Probably he helped his father doing the tables and the windows and the chairs because he was a carpenter, right? So that's why they surprised how this, we know him. Is one of us how he can be, you know, uh, the Messiah. And what happened here? Jesus quote to them, hey, surely you will quote this proverb, position, cue yourself, and say, do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. The, you know, the fame of Jesus spread all over Galilee. And remember that Jesus moved to Capernaum and Capernaum was his, you know, headquarters because he could move around the Sea of Galilee, uh, preaching the good news all, all over the towns of Galilee. So they really wanted to listen to Jesus and want to see the miracles, but really they don't care much about what was, you know, what Jesus is going to bring to them, but yes, they want just to see the miracles. And that is what Jesus said, you know, I'm going to tell you two stories. And he said very clear, two stories that, uh, you know, that when if in these two stories that Jesus told them, they're going to see that uh, really the favor of God is not, you know, from the Jewish, only Jewish people, but to everybody who opened their hearts to the Lord. And that is what said, you know, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elisha. Well, if we want to understand this, we need to go back farther a little bit. What happened in the time of Elisha? In the time of Elisha, you know, also there was this scheme Ahab. This scheme Ahab with the kingdom of the north, there's two kingdoms, the kingdom of the north and the kingdom of the south. In the kingdom of the south is the city of Judah, Israel, all the Jerusalem city, and the kingdom of the north is Galilee, right? What happened here in the kingdom of the north? This Ahab married with Jezebel. And Jezebel was a, as a queen that uh, she was, uh, you know, pagan. So she introduced the cult of Baal, right? The cult of Baal is was, you know, is the god of the fertility. And, and, and it's contrary to the god of, you know, of Israel when they promised that they're going to follow just the only god of Israel. Yeah? And, and what happened here? They were unfaithful. So the prophet Elisha, Elisha uh, declared that there's going to be a great famine for three and a half years. And immediately when they declare, it start happening, right? He have to withdraw to the, uh, to the, to the, to the desert. And, you know, crowds well uh, feeding them. So the Lord said to him, go to Seraphath. There's going to be a widow who's going to take care of you. So Elisha went to Seraphath. And uh, the widow were uh, collecting sticks so she can cook for that. And uh, the prophet said, uh, woman, bring me some water and uh, also uh, some bread. And the widow told the prophet, as God is my witness, I'm collecting sticks to burn, right? And I'm going to use the last that I have on the floor and a little oil that I have, and I'm going to prepare this bread. But after that, we and my son, we are going to wait to die because we don't have anything. So the prophet said to her, right? Go and do as you said, but you are not going to die 
your your flowers not gonna not it's gonna be plenty and your your oil never gonna dry and three and a half years right where uh, they eat and uh, they have enough bread and in the drought uh, finish so what is he said first of all if we said it was not for any widow of Israel that the prophet was sent it was to a widow from Seraphat in Sidon, which is the pagan territory, and the widow was pagan. So what is said, Jesus, that the Lord is sent, and whoever wants to listen to him and to receive him. Now, listen to the other story. That was more surprises. And then, you know, this, this, this is uh, in, in the land of Syria, it was a uh, 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 Naaman. Naaman was a general, and this general, he was very rewarded in, 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 by the king, and, uh, but he will have a problem. He had leper, and leper cannot be cured in that time. But uh, there was a servant, a girl servant, that I was there, that it was from Israel. And uh, the girl said to the king, my lord, uh, there is a prophet in Israel that can cure leper. And they, they, so they called uh, Naaman the Syrian, the king, and sent him to Israel and with a gift of all kinds of things. When, the, when Naaman the Syrian arrived in Israel and went to see the king, the king turned his vestures because he said, this uh, king of Syria wants to make war with me because I cannot cure leprosy, right? <laughs> but uh, uh, the, 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 the prophet Elisha got word about this. And he said, send the general to me. So the general was, went to, the, to, see, uh, to see the prophet, but the prophet never came out to, to, to receive him and to greet him, no. He just sent one, uh, one, one of his servants said, go to the Jordan River and watch yourself for seven times and you will cure. Uh, Naaman the Syrian well, were enraged because, uh, you know, how he dare and how he asked me to, 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 to wash myself in this uh, kind of uh, filthy river. We have so many good rivers in, in Syria. And uh, one of the servants of the general said, my Lord, uh, if the prophet will ask you to make something almost impossible, will you not care for doing in order that you will be, you know, cured by, from, from the leprosy? And, you know, he said, why you don't enter into the river just to we refresh ourselves and, uh, oh, and, and you can, we see what happened. So, Naaman the Syrian entered into the river and after seven times, he was totally cured. He returned to greet the prophet and uh, he converted and even he recognized this is the only God uh, uh, on earth and I only will worship him and so he just collected land from 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 the place of the prophet to build an altar on in Syria right so now again Naaman was a Syrian it was a pagan people and, and the favor of God was this pagan so that is why you know in the in the synagogue of, uh, of Nazareth you know, everybody was enraged because they are saying, you people who not regard from your prophets, did not regard from the Messiah, did not regard from what God had sent you, no, you don't have the favor of God. Only the people who listen and live according to his word. All the people who open his arm to, to his, his, his heart to the Lord and, you know, listen and obey the words of God, they have the favor of God. Well, these people were so angry that trying to, you know, to push him out of the city and trying to, you know, to go uh, to the, to the, um, uh, no, 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 to hurl him down headlong from the hill that the town was built, right? But he said, Jesus passed through then, right, with power. So they could not kill the Lord Jesus Christ because uh, it was not his time, right? His time was not yet. So... My dear brothers and sisters, for us, first of all, we need to open our hearts to the Lord and listen to them and, and obey his word and do, you know, whatever he has commanded us to do. In the, because God knows us and he sees us who we really are. We cannot hide from God. Listen to what he says in the first reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Before you were born, I knew in the womb of your mother, and I make you a prophet for all the nations. 
right? So the Lord knows us, and he has a plan for every single one of us. And uh, in, in the second reading from the, prof, from the, from the apostle St. Paul to the Corinthians, is, you know, he speaks about love in an incredible way. No poet or writer has uh, depict love in a way that he is telling. But at the end, it's very interesting because he said something that everything is imperfect because we have faith and we see imperfect and we don't know anything. Well, we, we, we know partially, but when we see the Lord face to face, what's gonna happen? We are gonna know everything and everything we are going. So why? Because we are not going to need faith. Why we're not going to need faith? Because why we have faith? Because we believe, right? And because we believe, we, we have said the word of the Lord and because we have said the word of the Lord, we walk by sight, you know, because by faith, not by sight, right? So. If we see the Lord face to face, we don't need faith. We don't need, you know, hope. Why? Because now the hope that one day we will see the Lord is, is realized in that moment. So we don't need hope. So what we rest? Love, right? And why love is the most important? Because love, God is love. And when we will see God, we will see love in the whole realization that he is the one who is the source of love and we are going to become like him, right? So we can love like him. Oh, that is amazing because we need to, to love like him. So in order that we, we love with a sacrificial way. Listen, today is an ABCD. I, I begin to say this, ABCD is Archbishop's uh, Charity Drive. And Arch, this drive is, uh, we make this pitch uh, about every year, every year. In this month of February, we have done this. Last year, you know, we have a goal to $98,000 and, uh, and we collected more than that, right? This year, we have to collect a hundred and almost $20,000 for make our goal. And what's the money is used for? The money is used, you know, to, to make the, the charities, our bishop charities. And what is the charities? Is our loving action to do the works of mercy that the Archdiocese of Miami do. And what he, the money is, is, is doing is, you know, first of all, it's gonna be for the poor, in the archdiocese and you know the archdiocese has helped more than 10,000 people that receive health care and medical aid you know that 5,000 people that went to visit the respect life pregnancy centers have saved you know a pregnancy that they were in risk because they were you know thinking about an abortion and because they have we have those 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 uh, centers they can uh, reflect and, and we can help them right so is the schools and uh, you know, but most of all, also, maybe you don't know this, but this money that that we collect during this drive is used for the support of the seminaries, right? You know how, when I was a seminarian, who paid my tuition? You pay my tuition, right? Because of this drive, Father Jonathan's that is here and help us. You know, he has spent 10 years in the seminary. Who pay that money 10 years? Well, you pay that money because this, this drive help us to uh, support the seminarians and to give a proper education. So one day, you know, we are going to have a priest. Right now we have like a 60 seminarians in the process of becoming a priest. It's a great number and yes, we have, yes. And still, you know, we need to pray, but uh, we have a lot of seminarians, thanks be to God, right? And we need to have more because uh, I'm gonna tell you, for one priest that die, we replace half priests, right? So we still don't replace everybody, right? So that's the problem. So the rate of, um, you know, people who get uh, old and, and, and retire or, or die, you know, for the priest, you know, we have, you know, from ones that die, so two to die, we replace one. This is the rate right now, but here in the Archdiocese of Miami. So we are, you know, little by little, we're getting less priests. So I wanna tell you this, uh, I want to show you one uh, uh, video from Archbishop Wenski that uh, he, have, he wants to share and ask us to support this drive. 